Hello Precise for Life people. So I have programmed an intermediate and higher level workout for today. It's roughly about 20 minutes. It does involve moving quite fluidly through our exercises that we know on the mat. So you can slow this down wherever you need, pause it, pop in a couple of rest breaks. And if you need to at all times, come back down to the base level position, switch off and switch back on to reignite your connection. We're gonna start standing upright for a warm up. We're gonna start with lateral flexion, feet are hip width, knees are soft, and I want you to settle your pelvis deeply rooted in the center of your soles. Lift the sternum and softly relax the shoulders, hands by side, a nice soft breath in. Exhale, T-zone is flattening as we begin to reach down the side of the thigh towards the knee. We're gonna push one elbow up, tickle, tickle the ribs, and come into this nice side bend. Inhale back to center, rib over hip. Exhale for the side bend or lateral flexion. Tickle, tickle your ribs, push your elbow up. Inhale to center. I want you to imagine that you are pressed between two panes of glass. And this movement is side to side, opening up one side of the body rib to hip as we close one rib to hip connection. You can add in a reach, reaching up on the exhale as we come into the side bend, even reaching over your ear. Inhale, hand by side, come back to center. Let's do two more on each side. Good, exhale. And reach. Beautiful, inhale. One more each side. Think about keeping your belt line parallel, keeping your T-zone flattening. Good, come back to center, position the hands on the hips. Keeping the pelvis in neutral, we begin pushing the tailbone back and down, inhaling as we softly bend the knees, coming into squat. Good, exhale, push against the ground, flattening the T-zone to lift the spine upright. Check that as we inhale to direct the tailbone back and down, we're keeping the lumbar spine in neutral, bending softly through the knees. Exhale. Through T-zone, lift the spine upright. Inhale, into a squat. Exhale. You can limit the range of motion if you need to, coming into a smaller range, but make sure you are directing the tailbone back and down, uh, hinging over that belt line. And reach, so as we inhale, we reach forwards. Exhale, push against the ground, arms by side. Coming into the squat pattern, just for a few more, we'll say five. We wanna to start to warm up the legs, as well as the spine, and working through that nice connection of neutral. Last two. On this last one, inhale, reach forwards, come into the squat. Position your hands now on your thighs. Drop your chin to your chest. Exhale, scoop the belly round through the spine, shoulder blades towards the ceiling. Exhale, start to stack as we round through the spine to lift up right. Lift the chin, inhale, come into a squat. You can reach forwards if you need. Hands on those thighs, drop chin to chest. Exhale, scoop, roll and round. Think about keeping the upper back rounded as we push the shoulder blades to the ceiling. Use those heels pressed into the mat to roll upright. Inhale, hands on thighs, chin to chest. Exhale, scoop, roll and round. Keep the chin tucked until you lastly position the shoulder blades back over the pelvis. Let's do two. Press the hand into the thigh, exhale, scoop, roll and round. Beautiful, one more, inhale. Hands to thighs, exhale, scoop. Roll and round, stacking the vertebrae slowly, lifting the chin last. Take your breath in here. We're gonna come into a roll down, so drop chin to chest, exhale, sink the ribs towards the hips. Now keep the knees soft, allow the spine to open slowly, ribs are drawing towards the hip bones. Exhaling as we allow the rounding of the back, fully from the crown of the head to the tailbone. At the bottom, take a soft breath in. Good, if you need to meet the mat with your fingers, bend those knees ever more. I'm gonna position my fingers on the mat here. Keeping the head lightly resting from that neck joint, I'm gonna push into a bend of one knee and straightening out the back of one leg for a nice calf stretch. Inhale, come back to center, let's change. Pushing through a bend through one knee to straighten out one leg. This can be minor or a larger range if you'd like. Inhale to center, one more each side. Exhale for a bend through one knee as we straighten out one leg. Inhale. Good, keep the tailbone tucked. Think about this nice rounding of the back still. Come back to center for your inward breath. Bend your knees if you need. As we exhale, let's walk our hands forwards. Think about walking out on that plank, keeping the body steady as we lower the knees to the mat to come into box. 
Take a nice soft breath in, untuck the toes. You can pull the buttocks back towards the heels and reach the fingertips forwards, dropping the head to come into a nice prayer or child's pose. Take a nice soft breath in and out here. Allow the back to round, pulling your tailbone down towards those heels, resting that head on the neck joint. After a few breaths, undo and come to sit up, just lightly tracing the hands down towards your thighs. We're gonna to come to lay on the back straight away. So we've moved through warming up the spine. We're now going to work through some flexion and work through abdominals and this front line of connection through the body. So we are going to start with arm prep here. Position yourself on the mat, knees are bent, hip width align with your ASIS and a nice neutral spine, hands by side. Relax the chin lightly to the chest, take a breath in here. As we inhale, pelvic floor. Exhale, T-zone flattening, the narrowing of your hip bones to buckle up the belt, flattening the abdominals here. Take your breath in, position your hands over your chest, shoulders from the ears. Now keeping your ribs softly gliding down on the exhale, we're going to slowly start to reach overhead, coming into your arm prep range. Inhale, hands over the chest. I'm going to walk myself down so I can have a bigger range away from my couch. Exhale, arm prep, sink the ribs in and down towards the hip bones. Belly is flattening as we come into arm prep. Inhale, hands over chest and down towards those hip bones. Exhale, arms reach up. Exhale, arms extend overhead. I want you to sink the ribs in and down, connecting to those obliques. Inhale, hands by side. You're not trying to move or reposition your lumbar spine out of that neutral position. We now want the obliques to work to stabilize the upper connection or the upper abdominal connection to a neutral spine. Remember that you're not trying to arch your back. In fact, we're fully in control of what the spine is doing. The abdominals are dictating, we're holding instability in neutral. You can work through your own range through this shoulder girdle for four more. Exhale, sink the ribs in and down to reach the arms overhead, belly flattening across the hip bones. Good, let's do three. Really work through your own range here and if you need to, limit the range if you find that you're really coming into any kind of pain or discomfort through the shoulder girdle. Last two. Beautiful, last one here, exhale. And as you inhale, bring the hands to float back over the chest. Pause here, relax the shoulders from the ears if you need to rest. Come back to the mat. I'm moving straight into my toe taps. I'm going to now sweep the hands down towards the side of my hip bones. They're floating just an inch off the mat. I'm going to have a small tuck of chin to chest as I exhale, lift one foot from the mat into a nice, strong tabletop. I'm going to exhale to tap the toe towards the mat. Keep the belly flattening. Really elongate the arms by side. Inhale, knee back over hip. Good. Exhale. Tap that toe, sink the rib in and down. Inhale, knee over hip. Good, we're gonna work through a few on this side. Stay with me in single leg tabletop. We will move into a double leg in a moment, but I really want you to concentrate on floating these arms, extending from the arm socket all the way down to the fingertip and using the obliques to really hold an extra weight load from the mat, these two very heavy arms. Good, we're gonna do four. Remember to come back to tabletop. Exhale, tap the toe, ribs sink in and down, belly flattening. Inhale, knee over hip. Good, final three. Good. And last one. Now, as your knee comes back over your pelvis, pause here, relax your arms. You can also bring your knee to chest if you'd like a little rest. I'm gonna move straight into ab curl one and a half in a single leg tabletop position working on this side, knee back over hip, hands are now directed behind the skull, elbows wide, the thumbs are placed either side of that neck joint here. I want you to think about a little tuck of chin to chest, lengthening the back of the neck, a little head float from the mat here. Make sure that we are switched on through pelvic floor and abdominals, take your breath in. We're gonna exhale to curl, ribs sinking in and down to scoop the abdominals, peeling the back of the head, the top of the shoulder from the mat. Inhale to lower head and shoulder back down. Look at that knee to hip placement. Keep the tabletop nice and secure. Don't bring the knee towards the chest. We're looking to curl the ribs down towards the hips to scoop the abdominals. We're not looking to tilt the pelvis back. 
So if you find you're losing this placement, by all means, come back down to two feet on the mat. Exhale to curl, inhale to lower. Do not pull on that head here. Think about the abdominals, sinking rib down towards hips to scoop the belly flat, to peel the back of the head, the top of the shoulder girdle from the mat. Good, from this point, we're doing four more. Exhale to curl, inhale. Don't lose it on that inward breath. Think about the pelvic floor staying lifted. Think about that nice neutral spine alignment. Good, one more, exhale to curl. Inhale, head and shoulders come back down to the mat. You can bring your knee towards your chest, you can have a little rest. We're gonna repeat that on the opposite side, starting with that single leg toe tap exercise. Foot comes back to the mat. Have a little break, readjust and reconnect both your pelvic floor and abdominals. If it suits you, float your hands over your chest. Sink your ribs towards your hips on an exhale as you reach the hands down by side. Good, remember that you're floating the palms from the mat, so elongate the arm fully. On your next exhale, with a little tuck of chin to chest, promote or float one knee over hip to a tabletop. Good, remember your tabletop is knee over hip. You begin your toe tap on an exhale. Ribs are sinking in and down on the exhale, belly flattening as we tap the toe to the mat. Inhale, knee over hip. Really elongate the arm by side. Think about trying to press your arms down, but keep the palms floating from the mat. You are using this beautiful, beautiful oblique connection, sinking rib to hip to tap the toe, exhale. Inhale, knee over hip. Good, don't think about trying to use your pelvis or manipulating your lower back to come into the toe tap. If it's a small range for you, it's a small range. If it's a larger range, keep a soft bend in that knee. Let's work through four. Good, exhale. Inhale. Beautiful, final two. Keep the T-zone working. Keep elongating the arms, that little tuck of chin to chest. Now we're gonna hold the single leg tabletop position, knee over hip. We keep the T-zone working as we bring the hands behind the head, elbows wide. Little tuck of chin to chest. Think about lengthening the back of the head with a little float of the head from the mat. Ab curl one on the exhale, ribs are sinking in and down to scoop the abdominals. Keep your knee over hip, keep your tabletop nice and strong. Don't be tempted to bring the knee to face. Don't be tempted to lose that nice neutral lumbar spine. Rib to hip on the exhale, scooping the belly flat to peel the back of the head, the top of the shoulder girdle from the mat. Good, you're working very strong here, single-sided really loading through the hip flexor as well as the abdominals and all of the muscular stabilizers that are supporting the spine here. Now I really want you to focus on the exhale, sinking the rib towards the hips to scoop the belly. You're gonna do four more. Beautiful, elbows wide, don't pull on the back of the head. Use the scoop of the belly. Two. Good, last one. Beautiful, head to the mat. You can release your hands, knee can come to chest if you'd like to imprint or release pressure off the hip flexor here. Good, two feet come back to the mat. Have a little wiggle side to side. We're now going to bring the legs into a double leg tabletop position. If you need to at any point, you can come back down to rest or bring knees to chest throughout. We're gonna link the next two or three exercises together, depending on how you feel here. So hands by side. Think about that little tuck of chin to chest. Inhale, pelvic floor, exhale, T-zone. Coming into a single leg tabletop on your next exhale. Good, think about the lengthening of your tailbone here, that soft draw in of the belly button as we exhale to promote the second leg to float. We're keeping two knees aligned over the pelvis. If it suits you, you can keep your knees together, your toes pressed together. You might have a little part to make this more challenging. We're going to look at our single leg stretch exercise next. So we're going to start with hands behind the head, elbows wide, chest open. We're going to begin with a few reps of ab curl two. Little tuck of chin to chest. Think about lengthening the back of your neck with that head float from the mat. We're going to curl on the exhale, sinking the ribs in towards the hip bones to scoop the abdominals, keeping the knees over the pelvis. Inhale, head back down. Exhale to curl. And inhale. Now these exercises here are all series linked together. 
You can stick with one exercise if you prefer. You might choose to focus on one particularly for a few more reps. We're working in preparation to support a double leg tabletop position with the head floating from the mat. Good, we're gonna do three. Two, exhale. Don't let that pelvis tilt back. And on your last one, exhale to curl, lift the head and shoulders from the mat, support the double leg tabletop here. Keep the belly button flattening. Keep thinking about the belt flattening across the hip bones. We're going to release the hands from the back of the head, position one hand on the top of the knee, one on the side of the thigh. Now as we exhale, we're gonna draw one knee towards us gently over the belt line as we extend the opposite leg away, roughly at a 45 degree angle. Inhale, two knees back over your hip joint to tabletop. Opposite hand placed on one kneecap, other hand on the side of the thigh. Exhale, we gently draw the knee gently towards us. Now we're not looking to off print this nice neutral lumbar spine. Inhale, two knees to tabletop. Chin lightly tuck the chest, exhale. Inhale. Good, we're working in our single leg stretch here. Now if you can, you can support a deeper lengthening and a longer stretch in a lower position of this extended leg, provided you're not straining your neck, you're not losing that lovely neutral spine or that T-zone connection. I want the belly to flatten on the exhale. Inhale to tabletop. You could always have one hand supporting if you need to, particularly if you find that you're stressing your neck here. You could always bring the head back down and work head on the mat. Good, we're gonna do three on each side. Exhale, exhale, inhale. Good. Think about that nice connection through the flattening of your belly across your hip joint. Try not to imprint that lower back. Our final one each side, last one. Good, two feet or knees back over in tabletop, head back to rest. Have a little break and if you need, imprint the spine by bringing the knees to chest. But we're going to work through our scissors next. So this does incorporate two legs aligned over the pelvis in a straight or extended position. If it's not for you, come back to the mat. You can always work through your lift and extend. Now I'm going to begin with an ab curl position. I've made sure that I'm back in neutral spine with the T-zone flattening knees over hip in tabletop. Hands behind the head here, a little tuck of chin to chest. Now on an exhale as we curl, the ribs are sinking towards the hips to scoop the abdominals. The back of the head floats from the mat. Try not to um, tilt your pelvis back. Try to think about working within this nice neutral position. Now in this position, my knees and feet are quite close together. I'm going to extend the legs. They're not particularly straight. They're not directly at 90 degrees. If you need to drop the legs more back away from the pelvis, you can, but try not to offset the neutral lump spine. Now I'm going to begin with two hands resting on either side above or below the knee joint. I'm going to exhale as I draw one knee towards the chest. You can see here that I'm really lifting through the uh, back of the neck and the top of the shoulder girdle. And I'm going to lengthen the opposite leg away. You do not have to take the leg as low. It may lower just to 45. We're going to inhale, two legs come back straight directly into your tabletop or slightly further away from the pelvis line if need. Change hands. We're going to exhale, draw one knee towards the chest, stretching the hamstring on the side as we extend and lengthen the leg away. Use that draw in of rib to hip, that scoop of the belly. Inhale and exhale. Now, if you'd like, you can also add a pulse. Pulling the knee towards the chest, elongating the hamstring on this side. Inhale to tabletop, exhale. Inhale. Check that you're not stressing that neck here, that little tuck of chin to chest. We're working strongly through a deeply rooted T-zone. You may find now that your um, safe spine position is a little bit, um, a little bit deeply rooted through the center, as I like to say, i.e. we're using the abdominals quite strongly here. I'm not positioning the full weight back into my lumbar spine. In fact, I'm still elongating the tailbone down the mat. If you'd like to try for your final few reps here, you can have your hands even by side and try your scissors. Pulling the knee towards the chest on one side as we lengthen and extend the opposite leg. Inhale to tabletop. 
If you're working in scissors, you may not take the leg as low. Let's do two on each side, really feeling the abdominals. If you are very fatigued, come back to the mat. One more each side, exhale, lengthen and extend, pull the thigh towards the chest. Inhale, exhale. Good, come back to your tabletop, knees over the hips, bring the head and shoulders back down, knees to chest. If you'd like, roll and draw a few circles even, resting the lumbar spine on that. Nice. Beautiful, very strong exercises here. And if you need to at any time, remember you can always come back to these exercises or the previous one before, which is the root exercise. Lovely, from this point, roll onto your side, come to side lying. From side lying position, we're only working through a few exercises here. And the first one is the legs in 45 for our clam one. If you need, pop a, a pillow or towel under the ear. Realign the spine, top hip forwards, push the top hip bone down to lift the bottom waist. Neutral spine here, try to keep the pelvis facing either towards me or the top hip bone angled towards your mat, um, mat line. We're going to start with clam one here, nice and simple, squeeze the heels, exhale to open up that clam, thinking about the flattening of the T-zone here. Inhale, knee come back together. Squeeze the heels to switch on your glute lead. Exhale to open up knee. Inhale to close. Now I'm only working through clam one to help you find that nice um, support through the bottom oblique, which is helping the pelvic floor sling stay on. And now you also need to connect your glute activity, not just glute medius, but glute, uh, not just glute max, sorry, but glute medius, into this um, strong sideline neutral spine position. Good, we are using some hip flexor, but I don't want it to be the primary um, working muscle here. So you wanna keep the top hip bone rotated forwards. And if you feel like you're overstressing it, take the top hip bone further forwards here. Good, we're gonna do three. Good, squeezing the heels, making sure glute medius is switching on before we exhale, open up our clam. And one more. Good, keep that bottom waistline lifted, keep the top hip bone shifted forwards. Float the feet from the mat for clam two. Pressing heels, we're going to exhale open and inhale close. Now I'm not looking to drop that bottom waist. I'm looking to support neutral throughout with the T-zone, flattening on the exhale as I squeeze those heels. Now glute minimus on the bottom leg is also very important for hip stabilization and as well as supporting this pelvic floor sling. Now we are loading into the pelvis here with two feet floating from the mat. We've got four more to make 10 of our clam two. Good. Beautiful. Nice, last one, squeeze heels, exhale to open and inhale to close. If you'd like, come back to the mat and rest or bringing the feet down, shoot both legs long. Try to keep your bottom waistline lifted so you're in this nice neutral spine position. Make sure your toes are just in front of your hip bones. They're in front of you, not behind you. And shift your weight further forward so you roll your top hip bone more towards me. Double leg lift. Now we are going to make sure we are squeezing heels and inner thighs. Pelvic floor needs to be lifted. T-zone flattening on an exhale as we squeeze and lift both legs from the mat. Inhale to lower. Exhale, squeeze and lift. Inhale to lower. The top hip is moving into the top rib cage. We're looking to shorten the top waistline, very similar to our lateral flexion exercise from our warm up. But this time, it's the top hip bone moving into the rib cage, whereas previously we had the rib cage moving down. Now we do have some QL activity working here. Those are the muscles at the base of the spine, either side just above the buttocks and the hip bones. So I want you to make sure you're not rolling backwards. Keep your top hip bone directed towards me. And if you need to use this top hand to really support the balance. Now, if you find this exercise is very, very intimidating, i.e. you don't like the pressure on that bottom hip joint, you can switch it out for a little um, exchange of straight leg raise with the bottom leg bent at 45. I'm gonna go into lateral flexion in this position. So after this final one, I'm gonna hold my double leg lift. Now I wanna make sure my inner thighs and heels are pressed. I've got that connection of my top hip moved into my top rib cage, short waistline. And once I found my balance, hand rests on the top thigh. 
On my next exhale, I'm going to think about um, sweeping my hand down towards the side of my knee. You might feel that your ear peels off that bottom forearm. Inhale, ear comes back down, but the double leg lift stays solid. Exhale, double leg lift, and inhale to lower. As you exhale to slide and reach down the side of the thigh towards the knee, you may also feel that the bottom armpit is starting to lift. Good. So as you slide further into your double leg lift lateral flexion, you may start to now find that this waistline is shortening ever so slightly more and you're starting to feel that you're working higher up into the obliques, more up into that rib cage. Good. We're going to work for four. Three. Good. Two. And final one, please. Slide and reach on the exhale for your double leg lift lateral flexion. Inhale, forearm down, ear down, and slowly bring your knees back to 45 to rest. Have a little break here with the bottom waistline resting down. We're going to change sides. Let's switch over. Clam one for 10, clam two for 10. Make sure that your sideline position, top hip forwards, uh, top hip push down, lifting that bottom waist. Legs are at 45. Top hip bone wants to stay forward as we squeeze the heels, flattening the T-bone glute knee on. Exhale, open. Inhale to close. So we really want to think about the unit of muscles working together. It's not one singular muscle working here. The bottom oblique helps to support the pelvic floor sling. The abdominals flattening the T-zone band helps to support this pelvis setting so that we get the workload into your glute, not focused on this front hip flexor of that top hip joint. No, we want to make sure the glute heel is really working. Relax your shoulder. Don't be tempted to create tension around your neck. If you need, count your final four reps with me. Squeeze the heels, glute knees, T-zone. Exhale to open. Good, we've got three and then we're moving straight into clam two. Remember at any point, come back to rest on the mat. You don't have to continue on with me. I'm linking these exercises together to get you the most bang for your buck in this short session, but it may not be suitable for you. Your final one. Don't drop the bottom waist. Float the two feet from the mat at hip height for clam two. Squeeze, exhale, let's open. Inhale, let's close. You might need to limit this range of motion, particularly if you find you're losing the glute activity on the top leg, or you're losing this nice forwards placed um, hip bone of that top uh, leg joint. We really, really want to support neutral. So check your bottom waist, check your top hip, check your T-zone. You can be continuously checking with your fingers, checking for all of this muscular activation, which is really important here. Final three, squeeze, exhale to open, and inhale to close. Good, use that breath. Final one, good. Come back to the mat with two feet down, keep the bottom waistline up. I'm gonna shuffle along my mat so I can extend my legs. Make sure your toes are just in front of you. Your top hip bone is angled forwards, hand in front for balance. Now I'm gonna run into some spacing issues. So I'll have to go on the diagonal. From this point, we wanna make sure pelvic floor and abdominals are functioning. Squeezing heels and inner thighs, exhale, double leg lift and inhale to lower. From this angle, you may be able to see that my top hip joint is moving into my top rib cage to shorten that top waistline. If I find that I'm rolling back on my pelvis, I might need to make this range a little bit smaller and it might be a little lift. It might be a larger one if you find you can coordinate and keep your balance. If your balance is not quite what it is or what, it, what you would like it to be at the moment, smaller ranges work more efficiently for your body. Keep your top hip angled forwards. Think about that squeeze of heels and inner thighs as we exhale, double leg lift. Belly is flattening, the two hip bones are narrowing. Good, we're going to do three, two, and your final one. Now on this last one, we support the double leg lift and we hold. We're looking to find balance. This might be where you stay and breathe for 10 breaths. Once you've found balance, hand on that top thigh joint, take your soft breath in. Coming into the lateral flexion, as we exhale, we will start to creep the hand down the side of the thigh. 
we may peel the ear from the inner forearm. Keep the double leg lift as we inhale, ear comes back down. Squeezing heels and inner thighs. Exhale, double leg lift is still working as we slide the hand down to lateral flexion and inhale. Now, like I said, the top hip is pulled up into the top rib cage. And now we add the top rib cage moving down towards the hip joint. So you may find that your armpit of the bottom arm also starts to lift from the mat. You may find that your lift is slightly larger. It moves up into the top rib cage here. And you're working into that top range of the oblique insertion. Good, we're gonna do four. Really take your time here. And if you need to come back to the mat. Good, a small range might work more efficiently for your body. Your final one, exhale and inhale. Ear down, hand down, feet down, rest. Beautiful, take a longer rest if you need to here. I'm gonna move into four point kneeling box next. So I'm gonna push myself up, flip myself around and come into my box position. If you'd like, you can take a nice child's pose position, pulling the buttocks back towards the heels. Let the upper body round by dropping the forehead forwards, reach the fingertips, stretch under the armpits. That might feel ni nice. And you might have a little twist side to side. We're gonna work through a little bit of our swan prep, just so that we do work the back efficiently here. So when you're ready, come down completely onto the belly. Now we're gonna start with a few reps of stop signs to warm up that connection through the upper back. So hands are at face height, elbows are bent, Arms are resting on the mat, heels turned out, head down or resting, looking down. Now you're switching on to T-zone. Take a soft breath in for your pelvic floor. Exhale to lift the contents of the belly off the mat, the two hip bones narrow. For your stop sign, we want to begin with shoulders away from earlobes. And on your next exhale, we start to glide the shoulder blades down the back, elbows drawing into the waistline. You want to feel like your mid back is on. So as your shoulders glide down underneath that rib cage here, Pause for a second. Inhale, hands come back to face height. Exhale for the stop sign, drawing the elbows down towards the sides, shoulders drawing down into a V shape, into that waistline under the rib cage. Try not to use these glutes. Keep the glutes switched off for the moment. They've just worked very hard in side lying, so we don't want to work them here yet. Keep looking down with the eyes and nose, even if the forehead floats from the mat. Some of you may like to float your palms as you exhale, glide the shoulder blades down your back, elbows drawing into the waistline, and that will make the exercise more challenging. You may find that you want to peel your forehead or that sternum just ever so slightly from the mat. I don't want you to go into back extension yet. I want you to find the middle back connection through the middle fiber of trapezius before we layer in back extension. We're gonna do three. Two, and one. Beautiful, hands come back to the mat, forearms down, widen those arms. We're keeping the forearms down now, and if you'd like to stay switched on, you can. Now I really wanna think about lengthening my tailbone here, so I'm not going to go into a big range of lumbar extension. With a marble under my nose, on my next inward breath, I'm gonna roll the marble towards the edge of the mat line. I wanna keep looking down the tip of the nose as I promote that forehead to lightly peel off. As I exhale to glide the shoulder blades down, I wanna think about the shoulder blade drawing down into the waistline, peeling the chest ever so slightly from the mat to come into upper back extension of swamp prep. Inhale, chest comes back down, belly stays lifted, nose on that marble. Exhale, roll that marble underneath the chin. Good, again, inhale, roll the nose forwards, coming into that a minor head float, still looking down the tip of the nose. Exhale, glide the shoulder blade down the back, drawing into the waistline, peeling the chest ever so slightly from the mat. It might just be your collarbone at this point. Inhale, chest comes back down, nose on the marble. Exhale, roll the marble under the chin. Good, let's do four of these, working in your own range. Remember that it could be progressive. Each exhale where you glide the shoulder blade down your back could be an extra maybe centimetre of a rib bone peeling from the mat. You may find that you're already peeling one, two or three rib bones off. You could still be at that collarbone stage and working through a small range. 
I want you to keep the T-zone working and engaged from the mat. So don't be tempted to just dump the workload into the lumbar spine and skip out on this lovely upper back extension, working through that lovely trapezius activation of the stop signs, working into that nice upper and thoracic back. Good, we're gonna do one more here. Now on your last one of your stop sign or swan prep, I should say, I want you to come into that nice extension of the back, take a breath in. If you like, I want you to float one, maybe two palms from the mat and start to draw your breaststroke prep circles. Just a few circles, working in that nice extended range of that upper spine. You may find that you wanna bring your spine and your forehead back out of extension and work face down. Now we're sweeping fingertips forwards, inhale. As we exhale, the shoulder blades glide down into the waistline, elbow by side to draw your palm down. Keep looking down at the tip of your nose. Don't be tempted to squeeze those glutes either. A larger circle can make this exercise more challenging. If you're staying lifted from the mat, we're working for three more circles. Two and one. Hands come back by your side, forearm down, rest the chest down, rest the forehead down, take a breath in. Exhale and soften the belly onto the mat. Beautiful work. Bring the hands now further down towards chest height. Exhale, let's scoop the belly. You could round the back if you'd like. You can tuck your tailbone, pull your buttocks back towards your heels and come back to a child's pose, dropping the forehead in that rounded spine position. And that might be, uh, or feel particularly nice in this position here. Good work. Once we've had enough here, we're going to come up for a round of hinge. Now this is the last um, sequence that we're working in. It's looking at a side bend or a side kick position in kneeling. I'm gonna show you this uh, sequence face on. So I'm gonna roll my mat this way. Now you could choose to do it the normal way, facing the long width of your mat, um, but I need to show you the transition, okay? So in our hinge, we have knees aligned to ASIS. I've added some cushioning and I'm gonna lift the spine upright into high kneeling. I want a nice straight line from knee, hip and shoulder, but I'm not tucking the pelvis under and thrusting the hips forwards. If this is you, I want you to relax the glutes and I want you to lengthen the tailbone down rather than squeezing the buttocks. From side position, I don't want you to be tucked under. I also don't want you to be tucked back, okay? I do want you to think about that nice line and some of you may need to lengthen the tailbone down, particularly if you're lodotic. Hands can rest on the thighs for our hinge. Shoulders released from the ears, but the sternum floats. Now we're taking a soft breath in for pelvic floor and then exhale through T-zone. Good, take a soft breath in. Come back to think about your arm prep exercise from the beginning of our, walk, uh, our exercises today in our supine position. Sink the rib towards the hip on the exhale and feel the obliques on. Beautiful. I want you to be mindful of this connection of the top of the rib cage. The oblique line is really important here. On your next inward breath, we're going to softly rock back a straight line from the hip shoulder. Inhale. Think about that nice stretch across your quads and less rectus femoris. As we exhale, sink the rib towards the hips, flattening the belly to bring your up, yourself upright slowly. So your shoulder is back over your knee joint in a nice parallel line. We're going to inhale to rock back. Exhale, rib to hip, belly flattening. Good, inhale to rock back. Exhale. Try not to let your tailbone drop back or hinge over your belt, this is not a squat. And also don't push your hips forwards, those were my knees, to the point where you're thrusting your hips over your knee joint and you're really straining to open up your rib cage. I want you to keep your ribs dropped in. Inhale to rock back, a straight line from knee, hip, shoulder. Exhale, ribs sink in and down, belly flattens to come upright. Good, inhale. And exhale. If you need to, drop the chin lightly to chest, look down the tip of your nose. Think about pressing the tongue to the roof of the mouth, opening the lips gently so you can breathe through those pursed lips. They may help you alleviate any neck tension in this position. To add on, we might float the arms in line with the chest. As we inhale to rock back, we're looking. Exhale, rib towards hips. 
to not use these arms to create momentum. In fact, as we inhale to rock back, we can start to lift the hands into an arm prep position. Exhaling ribs towards hips, hands coming down in front of the chest line. Inhale and exhale. I'm not opening up through my lumbar spine and opening up my rib cage as I lean back. And if you find that this happens, you're swaying backwards into an arch of that lumbar spine, take the arms away. We're gonna work through this position for four. You're really working the quadricep here. You're really working the obliques. The shoulder girdle itself is really working strongly because we're not looking to arch through the back at all. Good, we're gonna do one more. An inhale to rock back and an exhale, rib to hip, hands can come back to float in line with the chest. From this position, we're keeping our pelvis aligned and stacked over one knee joint. Taking the arms out to side, we're gonna start to pivot or cartwheel, as I like to say, over, so we position one hand on the mat. Now to get into this position, you might like some cushioning under the wrist. You're going to bring one leg out to the side. Can you see the straight line that is appearing? from my wrist to my shoulder, my opposite shoulder out my middle finger. I've got my hip joint stacked over my knee and you can already feel that my bottom waist here wants to lift from the mat. You wanna stop yourself trying to rotate out. You wanna keep your hips aligned and facing forwards. Now I want you to find some balance here. Point out through this bottom leg and through the toe line itself. Take a deep breath in. Keep the belly flattening, keep the hips turned towards me. As we exhale, we're gonna squeeze through our glute medius to lift the leg from the mat ever so slightly. Inhale, bring it down for a side kick. Exhale, squeeze and lift. Inhale to lower. If you find that this exercise is too much for you, you can always come back to the mat and work in your swimming arms and legs. Good, I'm lifting the bottom waist. I'm not letting the shoulder slump. I'm really pushing off the wrist joint really lengthening through the arm and the shoulder girdle, exhaling, squeezing my glute meat, the side buttocks, and inhaling to lower. Come back to that activation that you found in your clam series. This will help you find the workload that you need through that side buttock. Good, we're gonna do four, three, exhale to squeeze, two, and one, squeeze and lift and hold. Take a deep breath in. Give me some pulses for 10. Push the heel up, squeezing the glute, medius into that last range. Good. Keep the little tuck of chin to chest if you find you're straining the neck. Push off the shoulder. Keep the bottom waist lifted. Final two. Bring your foot back to the mat, take your breath in. Now I'm going to transition across. So I'm going to push off the bottom arm. I'm going to bring myself upright into a cartwheel and I wanna bring the knee back to the mat directly underneath the hip joint. Taking it to the opposite side, I might need some more space. Straighten out the arms at the shoulder socket. Think about cartwheeling over like you did when you were a kid. We're gonna cartwheel over to bring the hand to the mat. Now I wanna straighten out the leg here and I wanna make sure I've got a nice straight line across my shoulder girdle from the middle finger of each hand. You can also do a fist placement as well if you find that the wrist doesn't want to have that much pressure pushed down on it. Hip is still aligned over that knee joint. I wanna really stretch out this straight leg. I wanna really lengthen the arms to push off the bottom shoulder to keep the bottom waistline up and the hips turn to me. Don't turn the chest up. Keep that straight line irradiating from fingertip to fingertip. From this point, keeping the belly flattening, we're going to exhale, squeeze the glute medius to lift the leg. Might be a small range, inhale to lower. You're working your glute med, lifting the bottom waist on the exhale, pushing off that bottom shoulder. It's a lot of balance work, so really lengthen the arm, find this nice star or T-shape. Squeeze on the exhale and inhale to lower. Good, if you want, you can also turn your eye line and look at your thumb of that bottom arm here. You may find that the neck prefers this internal rotation. You can always come back to your swimming on the mat. We're gonna do five, squeezing the side of the buttock, squeezing the bottom waistline from the mat. Extending the arms, really using this nice strong shape to push the bottom waistline off, pushing through the bottom shoulder. Final two. 
And last one, squeeze glute med, exhale to lift and hold. Give me those 10 pulses, pushing the heel a little bit further to the ceiling to work that final range of glute medius and that top waistline. Really extend the arms, push off the shoulder off that bottom arm here. Good, three, two, one. Bring the foot back to the mat. Pushing off the bottom arm here, we're gonna inhale, exhale, lift the spine upright. Good, you can sink back down onto your heels if your knees are okay with compression. We're gonna unroll the mat, well done. We're gonna finish with a little bit of a stretch in pigeon and a little shoulder stretch just for you to take a moment to breathe off. Come into your box position. Hands are underneath the shoulders, knees are underneath the hip bones. Shoulders are drawing down, push off the chest. Come back to T-zone and pelvic floor working. Now we're gonna begin by sliding one leg out of the box as if you're in your swimming. You're gonna cross over the ankle joint. Try not to skew into the pelvis, try and keep the hip bones nice and level. As we exhale, push off the palms, slide back down. Now you can keep a straight shin. Some of you will already migrate to the outside of the thigh bone here, coming down to place the weight into that back, um, into the side of the glute and the side of the hip. If you find that you want to limit your stretch, bend your knee. You can also use a tucked under toe if you want to take some pressure off of your hip joint. But slide yourself down where it's comfortable. And if possible, bend the forearms, cross them over, rest the forehead down on the back of the palm. Sink and round yourself over that bottom thigh here. Breathe in and out nice and deeply. Now you're stretching the side of your hip joint. And if it's uncomfortable at any point, Try and straighten out so you're resting down um, very strongly on the front of the shin. If it's completely uncomfortable and unnecessary for your body to be in this position, by all means come out of it and come back to your box. We're going to take two long breaths in and out, just letting the side of the hip joint and the glute relax, stretching slowly into this position, which is a lot of pressure on that hip joint. One more. Uncross the arms, palms back to the mat. Slide yourself back into the box. Good, from this position, taking it across to the other side. Keep the chest working, keep the T-zone working. Slide the leg out of the box, cross over the supporting ankle joint. Pushing off the forearms, we can slide ourselves back. Keep the shin straight and parallel if you need. Some of you will migrate to the outside of the thigh bone if it feels comfortable. Bringing yourself into your level of your stretch. Once you've found your level, Cross over the arms, rest the forehead down on the back of your palms. Let your upper body round and sink over that bottom leg. Breathing in and out nice and deeply. Now, some of you may find that you can come deeper into the stretch or that you need to change your position depending on the pressure on that bottom hip joint. And if it's comfortable, if it's not comfortable, come out of it. You may find that you get a little bit of a release and a drop down deeper into this position after a few breaths. We're gonna breathe in and out for two. Really let the upper body relax. Last one here. Beautiful, from this point, uncross the arms, palms back to the mat. Pull yourself back into your box. Now we'll do a little shoulder stretch. From this point, you're gonna take a nice soft breath in. Take the arm out to the side of the mat. The fingers can stay down if you'd like. You're gonna turn your palm to face towards you. Keeping the T-zone working the hips level, we're gonna slide this arm underneath the supporting arm window here. We're gonna bend the supporting elbow to draw the shoulder blade towards the mat. You can think about drawing the side of your ear towards the mat and if the ear rests down, you can rest the head down and just start to open up through the shoulder. We're gonna hold this for three long deep breaths in and out. Try and keep your hips nice and level. Try and keep this rotation in the waistline and in the upper portion of the spine. Breathe in and out nice and deeply here. You may find after a breath or two, you can sink a little bit further down. So you're opening up this, the back of the deltoid and the shoulder blade itself. Good, last breath in and out. Push off the supporting arm and that bent elbow to slide yourself back in and change sides. Nice, strong, fixed position in your box. Belt line is parallel with the T-zone working. We're gonna extend one arm out to the side, turn the palm up to face you and slide it underneath the chest and through the window that the supporting arm creates. 
You want to bend the supporting elbow so you can draw the shoulder blade towards the mat. Maybe even rest the side of your ear and your skull on the mat. Now we're opening up the back of the shoulder blade. So think about letting the rotation be waistline and above and trying to keep your hips from skewing around. A nice deep breath in and out. You may find that you can drop the weight further into the mat and that that deltoid is stretching, gently um, pulling the shoulder blade away from the side of the spine. A nice deep breath in and out to finish. Beautiful. From this point, push off that supporting arm and bent elbow to slide yourself back to the box. Well done. There is your quick and easy intermediate and above workout. Um, you can repeat this as much as you'd like in our break. And if you want any more videos, let me know. I've got a whole host of them on YouTube. Have a great holiday. I'll see you at the end of January. Bye.